Where did the bucks go or where did that buck I've been seeing on my trail camera go is kind of a common question this time of year among some hunters. And it happens every year at this time of year and there's some logical and scientific reasons why. A lot of deer physiology or changes in a deer's body and behavior are driven by day length, the amount of sunshine. So obviously there's more sun on a summer day and less hours of sunshine on a winter day. But you know, it's changing just a little bit each day. It's either getting longer or getting shorter. We've probably all heard about the winter solstice and the summer solstice, the shortest and the longest days of the year. And of course that amount of light, amount of light going in through the eye, triggers a lot of things in the brain, the nervous system, and that feeds into different glands that produce a multitude of hormones. Now, a lot of research has been done on this in test situations in captive deer herds where they're actually held in barns and researchers adjust the amount of light they get each year. Sometimes they replicate, you know, what would be a natural cycle. Sometimes they change it. They give long days in the winter and short days in the summer. And we find that through that research, you can really change when deer cast antlers or become receptive or all these things because again light through some of the sensitive glands in a deer control hormone production or stop certain hormones from being produced. Given the results of a lot of that research it's no surprise that bucks are changing their behavior or even portions of the home range they use at this time of year. That change in the amount of sunlight received each day, again, impacts more than deer, it impacts trees, right? Leaves come out, leaves start changing colors, acorns mature, farmers are harvesting production crops like soybeans and corn, hay grows faster in the spring, doesn't grow as fast in the late fall. All these cycles work together. We can't separate them out, they're all tied together. So right now, all those hormones are causing other changes. One of the changes would be a dietary change. Deer went from seeking massive amounts of protein to grow those antlers or produce milk for fawns. And if you've been pouring into a soybean field every day, which is really rich in protein, you may be switching to look for some carbohydrates. Deer are genetically predisposed or programmed to store energy for winter. When velvet starts shedding or peeling, some people call it, a lot of people think that's because bucks are starting to rub and they're, you know, they do that because that's itching and take the velvet off, but that's not necessarily the case. Bucks shed in captive bucks at research facilities at universities shed with really not much to rub on. Again, when those hormones change and they are finished putting calcium in the antlers, the antlers become hard. Well, that also cuts off the blood supply to the velvet and that velvet was a living tissue, well, it'd dry up and die. It's coming off one way or the other. When you see a buck that has velvet still stuck on the antlers, that's an oddity because it will just dry up and come off through their daily activities. Certainly bucks may be rubbing at that time because again, the hormones are changing and as that testosterone, a primary hormone is increasing, bucks are getting a bit more aggressive. That goes with other behavior you've been watching. Bucks have been running in bachelor groups all summer, young bucks, medium bucks, big mature bucks, all kind of hanging out, almost never getting aggressive towards each other. But right now, if you're watching bachelor groups, they're starting to get a little testy out there, right? You may see a buck pick his head up and kind of bow up like he's gonna fight or chase each other around or maybe even paw at one another. That's caused by that increase in testosterone that's due to that daily changing and that testosterone level is gonna keep increasing all the way up to the rut, but it's not a linear relationship. It'll go up and down, up and down throughout that season, but the general trajectory is going up. And as testosterone and many associated hormones change, well, that results in a lot of behavior changes in addition to bucks breaking up from those bachelor groups and starting to be aggressive towards each other. You may already be seeing or won't be long, you'll see some scrapes open up. Often the first scrapes, if there's any fields where you hunt, will be in the edge of field. Deer are coming and going every day, and they'll make little scrapes that probably won't be maintained throughout the season. 
at that early season, bow hunters tend to find a lot of scrapes, maybe even hang a stand over it, and then that scrape will die or they won't see many deer there and they think, oh, I must have alerted this area. I got too much scent in this area. But those first scrapes often aren't maintained unless they're in a travel corridor or a staging area where they're staging to come into a food source. And remember, food sources are changing. So putting that together, depending on when the season opens where you hunt, you may get away with hunting, you know, the back of an ag field, alfalfa field or something for a little bit. But if there's acorns in the area, you better be finding travel corridors or oak flats or something because deer are gonna shift their pattern, including mature bucks. As those bachelor groups are breaking up, there's a lot of factors involved. And one of that's just buck personality. Some bucks are a little bit more aggressive or even have a larger home range or more of a roamer than other bucks, which are homebodies or, you know, don't want to be around any other deer. Some of that is hormone related. Some is just that buck's personality the best researchers can tell. Like a lot of species, age is a factor in hormone production. And we see that in buck behavior. Younger bucks tend to be, you know, kind of giddy, going all over, doing whatever, usually hanging with two or three buddies. More mature bucks often become solitary or not hanging with many other bucks. And they will define a more of a core area. Now that doesn't mean it's a territory. Bucks are not protecting a territory. That's a myth. Uh, GPS collars, even before that radio telemetry has shown that bucks don't protect the territory. Scrapes don't mark the edge of a territory that a buck will defend. That's more of a carnivore thing. Coyotes, wolves, bobcats are very territorial, but not deer, especially during the rut. But they certainly have core areas, areas they use more, and those areas tend to expand a little bit during the rut, and not all deer have the same size core area. Home range is often defined as everywhere a deer goes within an entire year. Core area and a secure core area can be really small, think 50 acres or 100 acres. That's often where deer go for intense security if they feel pressure or threatened and where they can get away from other deer or certainly threats like hunters. Some bucks really are solitary and they just don't want anyone else around them. Some bucks are a little bit more gregarious and they hang with some buddies but it's understanding that core area can be the key to wrapping your tag on a buck. There's almost always going to be really good cover, probably two or three places of cover in that core area, some food and some water. Now, a deer's home range is what they use throughout the entire year. That's kind of a definition of home range. They may summer over here in a, you know, some native vegetation or bean field, move up to some ridges for acorns, and you know, go over here for water or security. Now we need to understand that that home range again is throughout the year. What we're looking for is where deer are using during the hunting season. And that's usually a much smaller portion of their home range. And that small portion can change like we're talking about as hormones or resources change. And understanding these changes that are going to occur will allow you to get in striking distance of a deer much more frequently. Growing Deer is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Also by Green Cover Food Plots, Winchester, Moultrie Mobile, Fleet Outdoor Apparel, Morel Targets, RTP Outdoors, Fourth Arrow, Scorpion Venom Archery, Case IH Tractors, Ward Laboratories, Burris Optics, National Land Realty, G5 Broadheads, Prime Bows, and Redneck Hunting Blinds. This morning it felt great here in the Ozark Mountains. Got a, you know, a long sleeve shirt on, t-shirt underneath it. It would drop down, I don't know, low 60s or something like that, where it's been being 70s or 80s in the morning. So big change for me, and I'm sure for deer too. As temperature changes, deer may do some simple stuff like from bedding in a shady area, maybe a north facing slope or a creek bottom. As it gets a little cooler, they may want to bed on that south facing slope or somewhere where some sun is getting to them versus being in the shade. So a lot of factors are changing. Here's a factor not a lot of people talk about. Insects are probably changing, right? As it gets cooler, maybe not as many mosquitoes or deer flies or something. And that may allow deer to use some areas they've been avoiding earlier because they don't like those pesky insects any more than we do. 
There's another big factor that's not talked about a lot that's occurring this time of year throughout much of the whitetails range, and that's human action within deer core ranges or home ranges. Probably more people are out checking trail cameras, scouting, hanging stands, getting a little more pleasant, people are out hiking, using the timber more. So there's a lot more activity in a lot of deer home ranges than there's been throughout the summer. In summertime, more people were fishing on the lake, on a golf course, doing whatever. So this time of year, you got all these light changes, hormone changes, food sources changes, and maybe more predator changes. Remember, we're predators. We smell like a predator. We kind of sound like a predator when we walk. We're predators. So if a deer's in an area, say you're hunting national forest, you're scouting a bunch of public land, they haven't heard anything all summer long except other critters. All of a sudden, a guy, you know, a gal goes through there scouting, hanging trail cameras, leaving all kind of scent. Of course, that's going to send a little ripple through the local deer community and they're gonna be alert, right? Those ears are up, they may use some different areas, something like that, so you need to pay attention to that. You may use that to your advantage. You may come in the back door of a public area and let other hunters kind of push some deer to you or go that extra you know, mile, so to speak, back off the road and get to where deer are shifting to avoid that pressure. This may sound a bit daunting or, oh, gosh, the only way to, you know, to tag a buck is just luck at a draw, but that's not the case and certainly not my message. Just need to understand that, you know, hormones are changing, daylight's changing, day length, and resources, food sources, could be changing where you hunt. And bucks may be shifting to use a different portion of their home range, but if you're aware there's some pretty good resources for this upcoming season, it's almost certain that another buck will move into that area and as long as you understand these changes, you know, adjust your camera positions, adjust your hunting techniques, and get in areas where deer want to be at that time of year, you got a really good chance of putting some venison in the freezer. The longer I study deer and work with other deer researchers, the more I realize that even though deer are extremely complex animals, there's these rhythms or cycles that you can count on year after year after year. And you can apply that to your hunting strategies and improve your odds of seeing deer. We can do the same in our life. We can study God's word, we call it the Bible, and understand his will for our life and apply it to our life daily. And that allows us to have a much higher quality life. I hope you will seek his will today. Thanks for watching Growing Deer.